Are you thinking of upgrading from the iPhone 10, 10s, 11, 12, 13 to the iPhone 14s? Well, if so, here are all the upgrades that you're going to get from each of these models. Starting off with the lineup, with the iPhone 10 we only had one model, which was the iPhone 10. Then uh, the 10s introduced the Max model, uh, the 11 introduced the Pro, the 12 introduced the 12 mini, uh, and also changed the sizes. So we now had a 6.1 inch model and a 6.7 from 5.8 and 6.5. The 13 had the same options as the 12, uh, and now with the 14s, they dropped the mini in favor for uh, the iPhone 14 Plus. So if you're upgrading from an older model, you do have more size options with the iPhone 14. Now, when it comes to the design, the iPhone 10 was super revolutionary. As you probably know, it was a new generation of iPhones. Um, the 10s was basically the same. The 11 was almost the same, but it added the uh, frosted glass back, which was awesome. So if you haven't had an iPhone 11 Pro especially, uh, then this back is so nice. It also added the uh, huge triple lens camera module. Uh, and then with the 12, we got the flat frame design uh, that we used to have on the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, and 5S. The iPhone 13s basically kept the same design, but made the camera module even bigger than before. And it's pretty much the same story with the iPhone 14s. An even bigger camera bump on the Pro models. So if you're upgrading from the iPhone 11 or older, uh, you will be getting this fresh new design, which to be honest, it's not technically new anymore. I also want to talk about the colors. So the iPhone 10 only came in space gray and silver. The 10s introduced the gold, which was actually new at the time for this iPhone 10 style design. Uh, then the iPhone 11 introduced the midnight green, which looked pretty awesome. Uh, the 12 introduced the Pacific blue, which is still one of my favorite colors ever on a phone. Uh, then the 13 introduced the Alpine green um, and the Sierra blue. And now the 14 introduces space black and deep purple. So if you're a fan of any of these new colors, um, then that would be another good reason to go for the iPhone 14s. Uh, I really love the space black on the Pro models. I think that looks amazing. Uh, and the non-Pro models also get some fresh colors too. There's a new purple, uh, a different shade of red, and then also a light blue, which looks pretty good. Then another big upgrade that you'll be getting, upgrading to the 14s, uh, will be the display brightness. So on the iPhone 10, we only had 625 nits of brightness. Same for the 10s, same for the 11. The 11 Pro actually bumped that to 800 nits. The 12 kept it to 625, then the 13 bumped it to 800, the 13 Pro bumped it further to 1000, the 14 is still at 800, and now the 14 Pro can go up to 2000 nits. So if you're coming from a 12 or even, to be honest, even a 13 Pro, you're gonna get double the brightness with the iPhone 14 Pro, which outdoors, that's gonna make a huge difference. But an even bigger difference is ProMotion. So this was introduced with the iPhone 13 Pro, and only the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro have it. It's essentially a 120Hz refresh rate, which is adaptable, can go down to 1Hz on the 14 Pro or 10Hz on the 13 Pro, and it makes the phone feel significantly faster and significantly more fluid. I would say that this is one of the biggest reasons to upgrade to uh, the 14 Pro to from one of the older phones that you might have. Another reason uh, is the always-on display. This is only on the 14 Pro, and you probably know what it is. It's actually super useful. It's one of my favorite features on an Android phone, and we finally have it on the iPhone as well. And I also want to talk about the notch. So all of these phones do have a notch, as they all feature that brand new design style that the iPhone 10 introduced. So the iPhone 10, 10s, 11, and 12, they all have the same exact sized notch. Uh, the iPhone 13s actually made it a tiny bit smaller, although we don't really get any extra features because of that. And then uh, the iPhone 14 kept it the same. The iPhone 14 Pro is the one that actually removed the notch in favor for uh, the Dynamic Island, which is really fun to use. You get some cool animations and some extra functionality because of that. And now I want to talk about a camera, the main camera, because this got some major upgrades. So the iPhone 10, that's the baseline. The iPhone 10s introduced a larger sensor. The 11 kept it the same as the 10s. 11 Pro, same as the 10s. Uh, the 12 had, once again, the same sensor, but a larger f1.6 compared to f1.8 aperture. The 12 Pro was the same as the 12. Uh, the 12 Pro Max, which we don't actually have right here, uh, that one had a new larger sensor with sensor ship technology, so sensor stabilization. That was quite a bit better than the standard 12 Pro. Then the 13 actually used the same larger sensor as the 12 Pro Max, 
uh, and the 13 Pro used an even larger sensor with a larger f1.5 aperture as well compared to f1.6. So the 13 Pro was actually a huge upgrade hardware wise uh, in terms of uh, the main camera. And now the 14 gets the same camera as the 13 Pro while the 14 Pro gets an even better one. So that new 48 megapixel sensor with a second gen sensor ship technology, um, a smaller aperture actually f1.78 uh, but yeah, in terms of the overall camera improvements, the bigger ones that I've noticed were coming from the 10 to the 10s. So the 10s was a huge jump in terms of the overall picture quality and the 13 Pro. And I think the 14 Pro will be another big jump. Now let's talk about the telephoto lens. So the iPhone 10 and the 10s they had a 2x module. The 11 actually dropped that in favor for uh, the ultra wide. And then uh, the telephoto was only kept on the Pro models. So from the 11 Pro, only the Pro models have a telephoto lens. So it was 2x on the 11 Pro, uh, then 2.5x on the 12 Pro Max. Then that got updated to 3x on the 13 Pros. Uh, now it's still 3x on the 14 Pros, but we also have another 2x telephoto option. Uh, which uses that 48 megapixel sensor to crop in. Now, in terms of the ultra wide, this was introduced with the iPhone 11, so the normal 11 and the 11 Pro. And this was a massive change, it was so fun to use, um, and the lens was basically kept the same until the iPhone 13 Pro. So the 13 Pro added a larger sensor for the ultra wide and also a larger f1.8 compared to an f2.4 aperture with autofocus which enabled macro mode. So the 13 Pro was a huge upgrade in terms of that ultra wide. Uh, the 14 uh, is sadly still the same as the iPhone 11, so no upgrades here. And then the 14 Pro has an even larger sensor than a 13 Pro, but a smaller f2.2 aperture, likely to improve the sharpness of macro photos. And if you're upgrading to the iPhone 14s, you're also going to get a major update in terms of the front facing camera. So the iPhone 10, like I said, that's the baseline. Uh, the 10s had the same sensor as the iPhone 10 on the front, but it enabled 1080p 60 frames per second from 1080p 30. Now the iPhone 11s, they bumped the resolution to 12 megapixels from seven, they also added a larger sensor and 4K 60 frames per second support. And that's pretty much been the case with the 12 and the 13s. And now the 14s, both of them, they now have uh, the same sensor, but a larger f1.9 aperture uh, compared to the f2.2 for uh, capturing more light. And they also have autofocus now. So now you can take much closer up shots with that front facing camera. But I think something else that's really worth mentioning here is not just the camera hardware, but also the camera software. So over the years, we've seen a lot of improvements in terms of the HDR image processing. The iPhone XS introduced smart HDR. That's why this was such a massive improvement quality wise over the 10. And then every single year, Apple has improved it with smart HDR 2, 3, and 4. And sadly, with the iPhone 14s, we don't get smart HDR 5. It's still the same HDR as with the iPhone 13s. And then we also got Deep Fusion with the iPhone 11 Pros. Honestly, um, I haven't really noticed that much of a difference compared to HDR, which made a huge difference. This simply improves the low light photography by simply making the photos sharper. Then portrait mode got some big improvements with the iPhone 12 Pro because of that lighter module, it could focus faster. Uh, and we also got night mode portraits. Uh, speaking of night mode, we got this with the iPhone 11 Pros. Um, and initially it was only on the main module. Uh, the iPhone 12 then also added uh, night mode on the ultra wide. And then with the 13s, we finally got it on all the lenses, including the front. So if you're upgrading from an older model, night mode is gonna make a huge difference in terms of uh, your night mode photography. And then we also got Pro Raw on the iPhone 12 Pro and the 13 Pro, uh, which is great if you want to play with your photos and edit them in post afterwards. Of course, you can use a third party app to still do that on all of these older models. I just found that Apple's Pro Raw does offer a bit more flexibility and quality. And then with the 14s, we also got something called the Photonic Engine, which is basically uh, Deep Fusion 2.0. <laughs> so it changes the way it processes the images and now processes raw images instead of uh, JPEGs and you get some major improvements in terms of low light. So two times improvements for the main camera, two times for the telephoto, and three times for the ultrawide module. Now, in terms of the video quality, uh, these phones can all do 4K 60. Now, with the 10s, we got uh, stereo audio recording, so that was just a small jump from the 10. With the 11s, we got audio zoom and quick take video, another small change. The 12 was a pretty big change as we got night mode time-lapse and Dolby Vision HDR in 4K 30. 
but then the 13 was an even bigger change as we got cinematic mode in 1080p 30, Dolby Vision HDR in 4K 60, and we also got that sensor shift stabilization for an even more stable video. Then the 13 Pro introduced the ability to shoot ProRes video, and now the 14s, they introduced action mode, which is just really, really stable video in 2.8K 60, and also cinematic mode in 4K 30 compared to 1080p 30. Now, of course, that's like I said with the 12 Pro, we got the LiDAR module, which the 13 Pro and the 14 Pros also have. This helps with focusing and also in terms of AR apps. So if you want to use AR apps and measure some furniture in your house, for example, and walls, that kind of stuff, then um, these iPhones are gonna be much more accurate because of that lighter module. Now, let's talk about performance because this is another big upgrade. Like I said, ProMotion is really the thing that's gonna make the biggest impact, but of course the CPU and the RAM will also help in terms of your day-to-day -day usage. So the iPhone X only had the Apple A11 and 3GB of RAM, then got bumped to the A12 with 4GB of RAM with a XS. Uh, the 11 had the A13 with 4GB of RAM, uh, and the 12 then had the A14 with 4 gigs, while the 12 Pro had the A14 with 6 gigabytes of RAM. Then we had this weird situation with the 13s where the 13 Pro actually had 2 extra gigabytes of RAM and 1 extra GPU core, uh, and the 14 situation is even weirder as the 14 has the same chip as the 13 Pro, but this is the first time when we actually don't get a new chip with the iPhone with the new model. Um, and then the 14 Pro has the true A16 with six gigabytes of RAM. And here are the actual performance improvements in percentages, single core and multi-core wise, from each model compared to the iPhone 14 Pro. As you can see, the improvements are pretty big, mostly from the iPhone 12 and older models. Now, when it comes to the battery life, um, I'm not gonna bore you with battery numbers. I've used all of these phones over the years myself for basically a year each. And um, I gotta say, the biggest improvement was with the iPhone 13s. So all of these had a pretty poor battery life. The 13s were a major upgrade. And the only exception was the 11 Pro Max that actually had a very good battery life. But other than that, the 13s and the 14s now are said to have an extra hour over the 13s. So if you're upgrading from an older iPhone uh, with a weaker battery health, then the 14s are gonna be a huge upgrade battery life wise. Sadly, the connector is still lightning on all of these models. So that hasn't changed. Uh, and fast charging is still the same, 50% in 30 minutes on all of them. But what we did get charging wise is in terms of MagSafe, which got introduced with the iPhone 12 uh, and 12 Pro. So this essentially allows you to charge via wireless charging much faster at 15 watts compared to 5 watts. Uh, and this also enabled uh, 7.5 watts without MagSafe. Now, MagSafe also enabled accessories on the iPhone 12 and newer, uh, such as car chargers, stands, and uh, just mounts, which to be honest, were really useful and nice to have. So I would say that's another reason to upgrade to the 14s uh, because of that MagSafe functionality, especially if you don't have it. But yeah, that's pretty much everything. I would say personally, if you have an iPhone 13, think about it. If you have a 12, maybe. If you have an 11 or older, definitely upgrade to the iPhone 14s. But let me know which iPhone do you have right now and if you are upgrading to the iPhone 14s and what uh, the main reason is. I'm Daniel, feel free to check out the previous videos that we've done on the 14s, Apple Watch, Ultra, and AirPods. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.